Hey folks, it's Matt once again. Welcome back to another video of another film, this time of Street Trash. Now, I don't know how many people out there have actually seen this movie, but I always thought of this as if trauma films made good movies. This isn't a trauma movie, but that kind of sensibility in a trauma movie, but if it was a good film, because I'm not a fan of trauma films. I'm not a fan of the Toxic Avenger or all the, all of their movies but that kind of type of weird quirkiness sense of humor but this one I just thought it was done better than the trauma films it was better directed usage of steady cam for certain shots more interesting characters even little small uh, little supporting characters like this actor named James Lorenz who would later be the star of Frankenhooker he's just a doorman and him and this other guy uh, actor's name is Tony Tony Darrow they have a couple scenes of the movie and they steal the show they're sort of firing back and forth against each other and this is considered a melt movie where a lot of people do melt into goopy, gory bits with a lot of different colors. Not just red, but blue and green and all the colors of the rainbow they melt. Now, the story it takes place in lower Manhattan, and you have these two guys. One's an older guy with a beard, and then his younger brother. They live in this tire hut in the back of this auto wrecking yard. And there's a bunch of other bums and homeless people there. There's this guy who runs the place, who's very psychotic. Uh, the character's name is Bronson. He was in Vietnam, so yes, you do get a Vietnam flashback. He has a knife made out of a femur bone. Um, you have this tough cop. That apparently the guy in real life was a cop. Trying to remember the actor's name. I cannot remember the actor's name. I think it's Bill Chipple. And he's a tough. You could tell he was a real cop. Like he was a, used to be a cop in real life because he has that certain demeanor that's natural. Uh, of being a tough guy, you know, big guy. At one point, he beats the fuck out of a person and then pukes on the guy for good measure. You have a bunch of other homeless people. You have this one guy that goes in the supermarket and starts putting all this stuff down his pants again and again and again. And then when people catch him on it, he's like, oh, What, you think I'm doing this? You little fuck that bitch. <laughs> She's lying. But he's probably like turkeys, like or chicken, and chicken, all this stuff down his pants to steal from it. And all the meanwhile, this liquor store, this guy finds behind this piece of the wall, this type of alcohol called Tenafly Viper, and he decides to start selling it for a buck. And for people who drink it, they melt. Like this shot. Right now it's colorful, but this shot happens in the movie where a guy drinks it and he melts down into the toilet. And his hand actually, he does try to reach up and then this part falls apart. So his hand is stuck on the, I don't know what you call it, the fleshy thing, like in this picture. And it's goopy, gory, uh, practical effects. I guess they, uh, granted it's still not rated, but they didn't go full out blood, red, maybe the maybe they thought they were going to get an R rating if they used different colors, but it, it works in this movie, kind of like how the, some of the different colors work in Evil Dead 2, kind of fun in that aspect. And this movie is definitely not PC. This movie could definitely offend some people, but I still thought it was a fun film. It had very interesting like characters and actors. Uh, it was dirty. There's a point where the bad guy cuts someone's dick off, and this whole sequence plays out where they play keep away with it, and like playing football. 
it, it's one of those things you have to see to sort of uh, understand what the hell I'm talking about it. And it's so insane. And yet, I don't know why this film works, but a trauma film for me doesn't. I think, honestly, the, the writing is a bit better. Written produced by Roy Frumkus. Roy Frumkus, he's the guy who directed that Dawn of the Dead documentary from back in the day. It's called, like, Documentary... Was it Documenting the Dead? I mean, it's a... He was on set of George Romero's Dawn of the Dead shooting behind the scenes, and later on, a documentary came out of it. He's done other stuff, too. And then Jim Miro, he, I did, nice, good-looking shots. Like in the beginning, you have these steady cam shots. The movie goes at a quick pace. It's a hundred and some minutes, but it didn't feel that way. Uh, the guy who plays the villain, I think it's Vic Noto, he really de does seem like he's crazy in real life. There is a making of on this two-disc DVD, and I think this has a Blu-ray. Oh, this is the picture of the remains of the guy who got melted in the toilet. <laughs> but on this, it does have a long making of called the Meltdown Memoirs which is longer than the movie itself so pretty entertaining documentary Brian Singer was actually a PA on this and he even gets interviewed I know there's stories about him not in this but later on some say he might be a pedophile I don't know that I don't know anything about that I don't know if they're just stories or what it is so I can't confirm or deny it and that's the thing that like, I want proof until I, you know, damn someone for that because that's pretty serious things to say. Just for all I know, it's someone who, I mean, you never know. That's the thing. But I figured I had to mention that in case someone else does. But the movie. It has some interesting dialogue, like it's a five dollar investigation with five cents worth of shit. And the cop is a badass. One of my only gripes with the movie is what happens with the cop. I wish the cop had. Uh, this is a point where the cop gets killed. I know that's a spoiler, but I had to go on to one of the gripes I have. I would prefer that not happening because I really enjoyed the character. I would prefer something better for him to happen. Again, it's a lot of stuff that will offend people. Like this one time a, a girl gets raped. Thankfully, it's not I spit on your grave style. Thankfully. Like our, our lead characters with this woman, he passes out. And some of the other like more villainous bombs take her. And, but again, thankfully... I don't want to use the word tastefully, but it's it's again it's not I spit on your grave or other stuff. And then she's found dead, and then you get the the notion that the guy who runs the auto yard, maybe fucked the dead body. But again, I know it's weird to say it's done tastefully, but it's just he looks at her, it cuts away, and then some cop mentions. Uh, oh yeah, I think one of the guys, you know, we tested the body, one of the guys had some type of crabs. And then you see the, the guys are itching, and it's like, oh, okay, like, you get the idea. And yeah, it's definitely an un-PC movie that could be offensive to a lot of people. But I, I keep stressing that for some reason, like, I hate trauma films, I hate them, but this movie works... And yeah, I think because of the, the melting effects, the the sh steady cam, some good looking shots for such a low budget, the certain characters. I, I mentioned James Lawrence as the own as the doorman, and Tony Darrow plays his owner of this restaurant. And just the way James Lorenz, I really like that actor. I like him in Frank Hooker. I like him in this. He's it's my favorite part of the movie between him and 
you know, Uncle Tony, where Jay's always like, oh, there's some stink bomb, you know, bad odor, swear to Jesus, Mary, and, you know, it's Joseph, Mary, Jesus on the cross. And they are on there in a police station with the cop, and the Tony's like, look at this fucking rat, he's got diarrhea of the mouth. And James Lorenz fights back with, yo, that girl you were with, yo, she was with the bum. You know, I st think the stink of the bum is where I attracted the winos. The Donna douchebags, that's what you are, that's what they call you. You know, you know I'd rather die than wear this monkey suit for you. I look like Bullwinkle. My mother, my mother weeps when I come home knowing I work for you. Yeah, your mom is going to weep, you fucking rat. <laughs> I'm not doing a, a sir uh, as good of a service, but again, the, the, if you ever watch the film, there's a doorman and then there's a guy named Tony, and that's James Lorenz and Tony Darrow. And, uh, again, they're only in like probably three scenes in the movie, but for me, they steal the film, and that's what I mean. Like this is a movie that even the little parts of it will shine, well, on the the craziness of of the rest of the movie. I did like the villain, he does seem like a crazy some bitch. He even has his throne on the auto yard, which you can see there. Um, there's this woman he's with who's very anorexic and thin. Kind of creepy looking. And the fact of being so thin. I don't know, when people are that thin that they're still it's, it's I always feel bad. Like eat something, man. But And again, the the melt scenes are entertaining to watch in that 80s fashion. This came out in 1987. I think it took a little while to get made, but I don't think it had a wide release. I'm trying to remember the first time I saw this. How I can't remember the first time I saw this film, how I found it. But... This one, I again, the, the melt scenes are crazy. This one big guy gets blown up like a water balloon. Uh, this one asshole gets against the wall, melts. The bitchy woman who's with the bad guy, like her breasts, like all this you know, yellow blue stuff starts coming out, the nipples, and just. There's an explosion as well, and half of her body is left. And yet, the like this Tenafly Viper thing is only a subplot. Like the big plot is, you know, these two people living in this homeless auto wreck place, or their day to day lives, and then also dealing with this crazy psycho named Bronson, who's chasing the younger brother, who's in love with this Asian lady, uh, who works in the yard. And you definitely get some titties in there along with the door. And then the, the way the bad guy gets it, and this tank, and it fucks up the guy's head. And, and good, if you're looking for gore, this definitely has it. And then a fun way for it to end where, you know, the James Lorenzo, the guy I like, he gets caught by Uncle Tony with other guys, and he's tied up. And he's like, oh, you're, you're like Adonis, you know. Let me kiss the rain. Kiss the rain? No, you don't kiss my prick. But then he finds his bow Jay Lawrence has, and Uncle Tony drinks it, and he starts melting. Kiss your prick is dripping down the stairs. <laughs> Someone get a mop. <laughs> if you wonder like what the fuck I'm talking about, and if I didn't make any sense, it's hard to explain this movie verbally. It's one of those films you just gotta see for yourself. I did it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. But I guess if you're a fan of trauma, you might enjoy this film. But even if you're like me and you're not a fan of trauma and you're like, hmm, I wonder if that was done in my opinion, done right. Uh, this is a film to watch. Again as as what people call a body melt movie. I don't know too many movies of that category. I didn't know that was a subgenre, but apparently it is. This was released by Synapse Films. I thought they did a good job on this DVD. Again, the, the documentary is longer than the movie itself. 
and it does have a commentary, teaser, trailer, the original 60 millimeter short film that inspired the, the movie. I don't know if the Blu-ray has anything. Don't listen to this review. This whole Eraserhead meets Night Living Dead on the set of Tessie Chains of Massacre. I don't know what the fuck that person is talking about. Night Living Dead has nothing to do with this. Neither does Eraserhead. And not even the set of, like, don't listen to reviews like that. To me, I didn't. If Troma was a good movie, it would be street trash. I, I guess that's how my review would go. My quote, if I had a quote. But again, if you're in this realm and tired of the PC stuff of today, do you have a film like Street Trash a watch? It, it's uh, it's definitely different from the norm. It's definitely an exploitation film. But it's got that, like it says, a subversive horror comedy aspect. That, that's what it is. It's a horror comedy. Very unique movie. In the vein of like Blood Diner and those kind of films were, again, yeah. it's not, you know what, dare I say it's original. Dare I say it's an original film. And that's hard to come by nowadays. So you look back at films like this, and it's like, it can be done. Just films like this did it. So I actually do have a t-shirt of this. I'm not sure if it fits me anymore because it was given to me a long time ago, but I do have it. It was a very nice gift from a very good friend. So uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.